Welcome to Seychelles. Au Seychelles, la vie est belle. C'est ça. This is the Seychelles. Everyone calls it a paradise and they wouldn't be wrong because it is truly a paradise. Seychelles, it's a real paradise on earth. This is paradise, you know, this is another paradise. Seychelles is very good for the traveling, living and everything. Seychelles is beautiful. Ah. That's a beautiful island. Yeah. Wherever you go, <laughs> you will never see such a place like this. An archipelago made of 115 islands put together, a place of peace and tranquility known for its multi-million dollar high-end real estate, tourism industry and a heaven for the super rich. Because we do have a lot of five-star hotels here, five-star resorts. We have over 115 islands. There are resorts on many of those islands. A lot of celebrities, influencers come here for, for the luxury. In this travel documentary, I set out on an adventure to visit the Seychelles and tell a story of the almost perfect African country and the challenges yet unsolved. Seychelles has the biggest heroin problem in the world. A big percentage of our working population are heroin addicts. They do heroin or cocaine or whatever. Have you ever had any heroin before? Me? Yeah. No, I never. But I use a small my one, it's okay. This is the side of Seychelles the media hasn't shown you yet, and it will totally change your mind about visiting. I would appreciate it if you subscribe to the channel, and please give this video a like. This is one of the world's smallest country with less than 100,000 people living here. Comparing it to Lagos, that is 0.5% of the total population. This is truly the best place for social distancing. The streets are less crowded, roads less congested. The beach is where you're going to find most people. I wake up every day and I thank God for what I wake up to. I think we're one of the luckiest people in the world to wake up to this. An island nation with no industry or manufacturing plant, tourism and fishery is a major source of income for the islanders, which also has major drawbacks. The more we can have tourists here in Seychelles, the more will help our economy. And uh, COVID taught us that uh, we had put maybe too much emphasis on, on tourism. So when COVID hit, uh, we were basically on our, literally, on our knees. The country's income was next to zero. But on the contrast, the heavy reliance on tourists in the Seychelles is somewhat the reason why the country is very expensive to visit, explore, or even to live in. Not just for tourists, but local socials as well. Seychelles is expensive, yeah. also for us it's expensive. it's expensive, frankly speaking. It's not just a matter of seeing us smiling or whatever. Deep inside we do have something also. So, okay, what? But we have a proud, but we don't talk about it. I'm living here a long time. Seychelles is very beautiful, but it's a very expensive life here. Yeah. You can call it expensive, but even for me, for everybody, we find the price of living quite high. It is expensive, it is hard. You do have to struggle every day, you do have to work hard but you do have people that you can count on. In that sense, we help each other out. Um, I'm still living with my parents. Wherever I go, they told me that Seychelles is expensive. Africa is expensive too. If you go to Angola, it's more expensive than Seychelles. <laughs> Everywhere is expensive. Whatever you go to paradise, what do you expect? To give you more perspective, a hundred dollar worth of activity or adventure in Cape Town would take you three days to exhaust. In Nairobi or Lagos, a few days maybe, but here in the Seychelles... <laughs> How long do you think it would take $100 to get finished here? My God, just maybe two hours. <laughs> if you can picture images of linen palm trees, white beaches, lush wild interiors, then you can picture the Seychelles. The famous Archipelago is located 1,600 kilometers from the east coast of Africa. Many travelers choose Seychelles as a travel destination, not just for the beach and vegetation, but some islands are home to two UNESCO World Heritage Sites. I spent 10 days traveling through this country and this is how it went down. Before we proceed, inside this PDF is the travel guide I made while traveling through and exploring Seychelles. It will guide you through all the activities to engage in, where to book them, accommodation options, getting the visa and everything you need to know before you visit the Seychelles without necessarily needing to hire a tour company. 
To download the travel guide, look at the description section of this video. If you're visiting the Seychelles, accommodation would likely be your most expensive expense. Getting anything decent here will start at $150 a night. Because I was trying to keep my budget extremely low, I got a shared apartment that cost me $80 a night. Had to cook my own food. But the few times I ate out, I spent $80 for a buffet, $20 for a cocktail. You'll be spending at least $100 for a decent lunch or dinner here in the Seychelles. But all of this is on the cheaper side of things here. There are resorts like Six Senses that can cost as high as $20,000 a night. But one of my favorites has to be this. It's tucked in the mountains with lush vegetation for wealthy tourists visiting the Seychelles. Rooms here would typically start from $2,000 up to $3,000 per night. The mode of transportation is very limited here in the Seychelles. Uber or any e cabs you're previously used to doesn't exist here. One of the easiest ways getting around Seychelles would be to hire a vehicle and this right here is going to be my ride for the next couple of days right here but you don't need to use a cab services because I'm about to meet a local entrepreneur who is trying to solve uh, transportation problems right here in the Seychelles to make it more available and convenient for tourists and social was in general. Why are there no e-cabs here? All the cabs are owned privately. And as for the government, um, you are allowed to transport people by a license. That, that is a taxi. Okay. So Uber's aspect is anybody can be a driver. Here, this is not allowed as per the law. For you to be able to carry someone, you must have the proper insurance, you must have to have the proper um, business license, which is taxi yeah. and omnibus drivers. These are allowed to transport uh, people. Are you the you know, first person to envision an idea like this here in Seychelles? That actually made it successful so far, yes. So okay. we're going to be focusing first of all on Mahe. All these icons here, these are all drivers. How many drivers do you have at the moment? I have 108 drivers. How long yes. did it take you to get 108 drivers? About one and a half months. Wow, so it means it's a product people are accepting yes. gradually. Yes, yes. And also LinkUp is not only about taxis and drivers. Okay. LinkUp is a hub where you can get food, you can get deliveries. Oh, all right. You can get a um, uh, boat charter. So, like you can see, as soon as you open the link up app, yeah. um, there's a ride, there's a boat charter, there's the car rental, there is the island tour, yeah. parcel delivery, delivery genie, security guard, mm -hmm. um, grocery, drinks, pharmacy, and food delivery. So, more services are going to be added up. Or what does the passengers stand to gain using LinkUp whenever they visit Seychelles? Yeah, so like since we are using the official government pricing in terms of the rates for the taxi rates, yeah, um, uh, these have actually brought the prices down by around 40% lower. Also, a client can easily book a cab from anywhere. On so convenient. Island. Convenient. Yeah. You don't have to call manually like it was before. It was great to meet a local entrepreneur who is using tech to fix Seychelles transportation problem. And hey, if you're planning to visit the Seychelles, download the LinkUp app right now. Driving through the Seychelles is not for the faint-hearted, especially if you drive on the left-hand side. The roads are small and curvy. It wasn't too long before I got used to it, however. Driving up the hills and down the valley into the vegetation and the coastal road, this alone is an adventure of its own. I took multiple stops to take photos, of course. I've never felt so safe in a country like I did here in the Seychelles. Our journey took us to Constant Ephelia Resort in Mahe. I came here to tick an item on my bucket list, which is zip lining. It's very interesting for me because it's the first time I'm going to try this. How long have you been doing this for? Five months. So how many people have you taken on this experience in five months? So many. So we're good, right? Yeah. We're good. Let's get it! Can you guys hear me? My heart is literally beating. Okay, now we're, we're going to do eight of these, right? Yeah. Now eight. you still get seven more to do. Seven freaking more to go. Yep. How am I going to survive Let's this? Oh, oh my gosh. <laughs> ah, All right, I promise you guys I'm not going to scream on this one now. Let's try and not scream. We're professionals now. Let's get it. Go. Oh, God. Ah, we're fire. This was actually a huge bucket list item. Great, I checked it. If you're going to visit the Seychelles, I'll leave a link in the travel guide. 
everything you need to know booking this getting yourself here and all of those things check it out cuz I'm no shows guy I need to rest see you guys afterwards I visited the Takamaka room distillery to learn about the origin story of a room made and produced here in the Seychelles the property is very small but we are actually the biggest distillery here in Seychelles annually we make about 200 20,000 bottles. So after 20 years, business is doing great. Like I said, we're exporting to 38 countries and our main goal in three to five years is to export in all of your countries. We had a guided tour which was free but tasting would cost you 150 rupees. It's very interesting to see that they're exporting this drink to so many countries trying to increase their GDP. This is really helping the local economy, uh, it's employing labor. So this is Taka Sunrise, sort of like a cocktail. It was made with this cocoa and the, the rum blank. Put some ice in there, spice it up and just make it interesting. It's great to see a local product like this. So I'm just going to give it a test. It's about 150 rupees. So yeah. You can add this to your itinerary, to free activity, but if you need to taste the wine, sorry, if you need to taste the room, it's at 150 rupees per person. But I'll suggest that you don't taste, just go ahead and get a cocktail, which I did, and it was nice, yeah. I ended the day by visiting Eden Island, an artificial island in the Seychelles, lying about 3.5 kilometers from the capital city, Victoria. It's a luxurious part of Mahi where you can spot super yachts and take some dope photos, of course. Guys, can you see what's happening on my back? You look at this, this is a billion dollar worth of yacht right here. You visit places like this, you just get inspired to work hard, innit? To give you some insights on how expensive this place is, it's a two bedroom apartment here in the Basin 3 will start at $600,000 up to $3 million for super villas like this one. This is where you'd find the country's top 1% citizens and a lot of expatriates stay here as well. There's an Eden Mall shopping complex with tons of restaurants. So we're at Eden Plaza right now and then we can see like a lot of yachts parked here. And there's uh, the smaller boats here as well. If you want to go on cruises, you get this one. You can have a nice drink or dinner here, budget around 500 rupees. It was a nice experience, you know, looking at all the super yachts while having a drink. In my quest to explore the other islands, it was then time to leave Mahe. Ferries are used to connect between various islands in the Seychelles, so I hopped on one. It's a one hour plus trip here and I hope we get there on time to see if we can explore because I'm only there for like a day and then back to Mahe. My first stop was Praling. This trip cost me 60 euros, the most expensive ferry ticket I have ever bought. You can download the travel guide to see how and where you can book this. Mahe is the biggest uh, habitant island yeah. and Prale is the second one. Uh, Prale is uh, almost 39 uh, km, square kilometer yeah. and we have a population uh, just below 10,000 people now. And then we have uh, quite a lot of expatriate here working. A popular thing people do in Praling is to visit the Valley Dimi Natural Reserve, a UNESCO World Heritage Site, nicknamed the Garden of Eden. When we talk about Garden of Eden, Adam and Eva, 80% their function, similarity, same like we human. Mm -hmm. After five, six, seven years, the fruit became ripened. And when they became ripened, they changed color and they smell sweet mm -hmm. and then they fall. It's very heavy. You try it? This fruit is often regarded as the national fruit of the Seychelles and it can only be found here. You'd find statues of these fruits on the streets and even the immigration stamp I got on my passport had it. You might begin to wonder why this is so special to the people of Seychelles. This is the biggest fruit, biggest seeds in the world. So we're talking about 18 to 20 kilo. The maximum kilo in the world who broke the record is 42 kilo. It's a fruit that you would say a miracle fruit because the female plant is shaped like a, a woman's body, the fruit, and the male, uh, like, like the male. <laughs> this we name it a two by love. Whenever you see a kukulimel, like I say, like this one, like this one, big and wrong, it's two coco de mer. It's flat. It's flat. And another one cover it. And inside, when it's ripened, 
the kennel, the nets inside. It's hard. You cannot bite it. So this is this is the male, right? Yep. Doesn't you can't eat it? It's just there to pollinate the female. That's it, that's Interesting, it. isn't it? Okay. Okay, I put this in my gym. Twenty kilos. Let's go. <laughs> No, the biggest seeds in, the, in the, world. the world. I myself, as a local, we've never been able to taste the fruit. Um, it's a fruit that's protected um, by the government. Um, it's been like this for many, many years. Um, I have no idea how it tastes like, but we've heard stories that it's a very sweet, um, jelly-like um, texture. Tourists come here to see the fruit as it's endemic, it's, uh, it's special. Per day when it's busy, we can have about 600 to 500 tourists inside here. So the next day I headed to Ladik, I would recommend you spend at least three days here. It is the most popular island outside of Mahe. There's several things that people should know about Ladig. First of all is that we are children of the sun, born and raised by the beach. So we are real pirates. Heads up, you need to rent a bike as this is the only way of transportation here. Okay, so right now I have to go get myself a bicycle. For me, I'm going to take one of the bikes right here. It costs about 150 rupees per day. But if you want the electric bike, that's for 600. Uh, make sure you at least learn how to ride a bicycle before you come here, right? The island of Ladig, where only bikes and scooters are used for daily commute, is a living testimony to why the air is clean and fresh and also the small population size contributes as well. The quality of air right here is 100. Like you can smell the freshness and the unpolluted air that comes into your nostrils. I paid 150 USD per night for this one bedroom accommodation here and I love the little heated top outside. After I settled and I refreshed, I headed out to see what the island of Ladik had to offer. Seychelles is known to have giant Aldabra tortoises. 90% of the world giant tortoise population can be found here. This is a great place to watch them live their sluggish life. And they are so big, I can imagine what they do all day. Just sit down, eat, chill, have sex and just live a very interesting life. We got the most giant tortoise, uh, 150,000 tortoise found on this island. Uh, yes, and also it's the biggest population of the tortoise in the world. The island of Ladik is known for its lovely ancestors, the beach. hope I got that right, where you can find a shoreline framed by picturesque granite boulders. Right now you guys are at Susdajan, the very famous beach on Ladik, one of the well-known, ah. not only on Ladik but in the whole world. It was always voted as the most photogenic beach. So when people come here, what are the things they can do? Yeah, brother. For example, like everybody wants a selfie. So the first thing that they do is take, take one. a selfie. Yeah. If you've ever saw photos like this on the internet, it was taken here. You'd spend the whole day snorkeling, kayaking, or just watching the sunset at the shores of the beach. I spent most of my time kayaking here. Kayaking right here in Ladik Seychelles, very beautiful island. If you guys want to visit uh, the Seychelles, um, try to spend more time in Ladik. You're going to have more fun. There are more things to do here, but have it at the back of your mind that like there are more like water activities. So there are more water-related things you're going to do. If you have a bigger budget, you can go for scuba diving. This would cost you up to $200 per person. Look at my travel guide to see where you can book all of these activities. The Archipelago country in the Indian Ocean was ranked 29th in 2020, making this island country's passport the strongest in Africa. It's a fact that it's one of the most powerful passport in the African nation. And now I believe there's negotiations being go that's going on um, for America as well. This is majorly because of its political and economic stability, but more importantly, the government of Seychelles is constantly negotiating right mutual visa waivers with other superior nations. And to my surprise, most locals are frequent travelers. How many places can you go with your passport? Everywhere we want. Because Seychelles have a very good uh, relationship with different kind of country. I mean, you know, I've been to America. Mm -hmm. I went to Germany three weeks, twice in yeah. Germany. I stay in Liechtenstein for three months. I've been to over five to six countries. I've been to Dubai, South, South Africa, Singapore. Um, the hardest one uh, to get to was uh, Australia. Apart from that, other places in the world. 
um, we get to find them. But what is a perfect country without flaws? Drug consumption is a major challenge here in the Seychelles. About 10% of the working age population between 5,000 and 6,000 people have an addiction to heroin. The drug situation is very bad. As far as consumption of heroin is concerned, Seychelles is number one in the world. And this is not a statistic that gives me personally great pleasure. Heroin consumption in Seychelles is a problem. I think it's one of our mo most difficult um, challenges. A big percentage of our working population are heroin addicts. I feel like it should be on the top of our, our priority to try and control and hopefully get rid of heroin. I know this might sound as an as a impossible task. From the bottom of my heart, I hope that this miracle can come true. When you see the, the family and the person suffering from heroin addiction, some people would say that this guy um, is a heroin addict, he's, he's nothing, he doesn't want to work. I feel like once you're addicted, it's a sickness. After visiting and traveling through the Seychelles, I can say this is not just a tourist destination, but an almost perfect African country. The government subsidizes education and pays for healthcare. They are mostly women in leadership position, the strongest passport in Africa, the cleanest of air, the nicest of people I have ever met, strangers turn friends, a safe heaven for honeymooners, a true paradise for holiday seekers. I hope to visit again in the near future. Come to Seychelles, look at the YouTube. <laughs> and you'll see us please try to find us and we'll teach you things about Seychelles. thank you so much for watching to the very end don't forget to download the Seychelles travel guide if you plan on visiting the Seychelles. and until the next upload i'll see you soon let me tell you something here we speak english creole french and i don't know how many language do you want us to speak but <laughs> we'll be ready to offer you a, a nice holidays here on the island come one come all and come and feel it